Hello, everybody, and welcome to Robo Weekly, episode nine. We're still here. Hey, Dan, how's the West Coast? Uh, nice, a little chilly. It's like 60 degrees. It gives uh, you a chill. Oh, we had a 60 degree day for like one day, but that was last week. No, this so. is like every day it's 72, oh. and then sometimes it goes down to 60 and people complain. All right. Well, I'll move out there soon. That's why I'm not, I am never moving back. <laughs> um, I want to apologize to everyone. I uh, I broke my laptop, so I'm using a uh, laptop with a built-in camera. So that's why everything looks like shit everywhere, but uh, won't be like that next week. Um, uh, we have the robotics uh, conference coming up in Boston, um, which is the big one of the year, one of the big ones of the year. Um, and they've released uh, their best robots of the year, their 50 best robots of the year. Uh, I'm not going to go through all 50 of them, about 47 of them are specifically to do with medical applications and uh, industrial applications, which is not our focus. Um, but there is two that I did want to show you that I thought were relevant. If we could look at the robot of the year, please, first. There it is, Waymo. This month or the last month they recorded, they did 150,000 trips, which was up from 100,000 the month before. Let me and just clarify that. That that's that's commercial, not just like testing. No, that's actual paid for trips. That's wow, that's amazing. And that so they, they are never saying, they, yeah. yeah, they've blown Tesla out of the water and they won robot of the year. So yeah. nice one, Waymo. Apparently they're in Phoenix, uh they're at San Francisco and I think LA. Um I think I saw them in LA when I was there. Yeah. So so good one, Waymo. We of course know that uh autonomous vehicles are robots. Um, so we're happy for them. Good for them. Uh, second one uh, has won the award for Robot for Good. There it okay. is. This one is by a company called Hello Robot. It's called The Reach. It only no, has stretch, one arm. isn't it? Stretch or Reach? I, th I, th I thought you said earlier to me it was Stretch. No, this one's called Reach. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that, Joe. We'll have to cut that out. But I didn't want him to. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So there it is. There it is again. It's on a wheeled base. Um, it has an arm that's not telescoping, but that hand moves up and down the arm uh, by some mechanism. Uh, it's got camera and probably some I.O. at the top. And um, as you can see, it was actually originally designed for quadriplegics to help them feed themselves, to help them get things. This is very clearly in the direction of what we're going in. Um, but uh, this costs substantially more um but i like it and i think this is the right direction for robots yeah. for this kind of application um one hand i guess that 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 precludes some stuff um what, what do you think about this one yeah I, I i they've been working on this for a while i remember seeing this about a year ago um it's a good design you know with a single arm obviously there there are limitations to what you can do like opening a jar you know scrubbing a dish folding clothes become you know aren't, aren't really doable but there are some things you can do. Uh, and of course, you know, as in all of these uh, new platforms, the advent and advances in, in uh, deep learning, you know, make it much, much more capable than we would have thought 10 years ago with the similar hardware setup. Because the hardware hasn't really, let's face it, has not really changed that much in the last decade. You know, it's, no, it's, that's like we're looking at a room, we're looking at a Roomba with an arm on it, which exactly. actually is going to bring us very well into our next subject, um, which I'm, we're going to talk about because uh, it's specifically what you're talking about. So we're going to segue into that. But before we leave this one, I just want to say the one thing about this application, uh, uh, helping people, quadriplegics, people who have uh, mobility problems, um, will be paid for by insurance companies if it's cheaper. Right. Than but this one, right. There is a business model for this one that exists. I just wanted to point that out. Um, right. But you had some some good points about some other stuff, which leads me to my third company, which is Embody. Okay. Um, and the reason I'm showing this diagram is because it's literally the only diagram on their website. <laughs> they have no. I don't believe this is their product. All they have is text, and I'm going to read some of it to you because it directly relates to what you just said, and I want to get your opinion on it. They are a software company. They are based in New York. They started last year. They have between one and 10 employees. New York-based company uses transformers and an agentic infrastructure to help robots learn tasks in minutes through written and spoken interaction plus demonstration. 
And Body said it expects vision language action models, which we talked about, to eventually help robots generalize when used with existing technologies such as machine vision and cloud computing. Frequently asked questions, are large language models inherently slow for robots? While LLMs are traditionally associated with slower processing, quantization and model dis distillation techniques ensure your robot remains rapid and responsive. So, so here we go. We have this company called Embody. It right. doesn't do anything except software. It's making these sort of claims about VLA. I mean, it sort of claims right. about what everybody wants to do. There doesn't seem to be any solutions. There. Well, they're going to they're gonna be in hard. They're going to be in hard uh, competition with the with the the Open VLA guys, physical intelligence. That's right. That's right. So you know how how they're going to you know this looks like a complete not a startup. Um, you know, not even any images. Not even any. I mean, it's clearly a software company. So, you know, they right. are partnering um, with hardware companies, um, which I think is probably the way to go for somebody that wants to do so something, you know, to be hardware agnostic. Right. Um, but I'm still not 100% sure what Embody does. Um, okay. I know what it would like to do, uh, but I don't know what it does. So let's move on to the next one, which I think is a little more. Uh... These are not the winners now. No, this is tennis bot. This is not a winner of anything. Oh, I've thought but I about liked that. it because it's for sale. Right. It's three and grand. And this thing moves around and it acts like a mm. player and it shoots the ball down the line and it can and it can actually right. you know figure out where you are and uh it's pretty intelligent and it's shipping and it's three grand and that to me is huge. Right. It's the first one I've seen that We'll take an order from you. So yay. Okay. <laughs> yay. I, I agree. Um, I think the thing to note is it's cheap because it has no arms, right? A wheel base is, has uh, no arms. is, a, is you know, really well-worn technology with cost reduction for things like Roomba. And, um, you know, all yep. they really needed to do is put a basket, you know, basically, I mean, if I used to do a little tennis when I was younger and, um, you know, you have these machines that like, spit out the balls, right? Yeah. Sorry. But this one's this one's got cameras on it, so it can see where yeah. you are. Um, sure. So it can, you know, that's, that's I guess that's cheap. the magic there is that cameras are also cheap, cheap hardware. Are cheap. You know, that, oh, that, that's why doing... the whole thing's cheap. But I, but, I, but I like that they they did it, and so yep. and so for that really uh, uh, two hands up. Um, yep. But the last one we're going to show today is Dobot, and um, this is a, a Chinese robot. We don't know much about it. But I wanted to show it to you because I know you like kitchen stuff. Um, right. Here it is. Okay. Hello. So this is coming out of a company in China that we know nothing about. You know, they've obviously done this nice looking demo. We've no idea how they do it. For all we know, there's somebody inside probably a metal behind. suit. Yeah, it could be. Uh, it could be probably remote. Operated. Yeah, probably teleoperated. But in any case, it's doing the kinds of stuff that you want it to do. Right. So I thought I'd show it to you. Um, you know, these are the oh, kinds of things that we're going to be competing with. But, you know, the stuff that's coming right. out of uh, it's coming out of Asia, basically. This has um, got to be expensive. So that's Dobot. Any I price would guess or any it's availability? Expensive. Yeah. Twenty five thousand. No right. availability. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, okay. Wondered. So. So that's basically robot news. I think we've covered, you know, uh, you know, as we normally do, we've left out a lot of the industrial robots. We've covered the robots we like to look at, which is cheaper robots and robots that, that exist in the home and, and exist with humans, cobots. Um, so we've talked about, uh, you know, the award winners. We've talked about what else is going on this week. Um, we've looked at a few funny things like the tennis robot and this new one, which I think we're going to see more and more of these of these cheaper Chinese robots. So we're going to have to keep an eye on them. But but the topic I wanted to talk with you this week is really about price. Everything that we look at, as we know, is 25,000, 50,000 or more. That tennis machine was, a, was an outlier because it has no arms. It's basically just a Roomba with a thing on top. What is it going to take to get robots to the five thousand dollar level is it going to be scale is it going to be innovation is it going to be both which kind of innovation because i don't i personally think that you know yes there's going to be fifty thousand dollar robots fifty thousand dollar robots but there's going to be something in between of course that's what we're doing so my question to you is what is it going to take to get us there 
I think I think the blocker right now is the hardware. I think the, the software needs to be done, but I think the hardware is going to hold up uh, advances more than the software will. So I think we're kind of with, with the advent of LLMs and uh, action models where so software is kind of leaped ahead. You know, we used to have a saying, uh, aging myself here, when uh, Andy Grove was the uh, president of Intel that uh, Andy giveth and Bill taketh away. So, you know, the hardware gets bigger, then the software gets to the point where it needs more hardware. And the hardware. In fact, you mentioned you mentioned you mentioned a few minutes ago the fact that that basically the hardware stayed stayed the same. Yeah, and, I mean, and it's, it's, it's it's not on the same trajectory. I mean, we're we're getting there with these humanoid robots. Uh, they they have special, bespoke, very expensive actuators that are going to be hard to cost reduce. But you know, they will get cost reduced eventually. I think um, also, you know, in a warehouse, your lifting capacity needs to be you know, in tens of kilograms. And I don't think that's necessary for a home robot. So it can be it can be cheaper because it can be less strong. Uh, we've in our lab have done some experiments on building our own motors and actuators and uh, servos. And I think you know taking you know one of the reasons Tesla is so far ahead is they had all the engineering uh, capacity from making the cars to be able to make their own parts, their their own actuators, their own encoders. So I think, um, you know, the uh, the tariff situation may rear its head. You know, it, it creates at least uncertainty about supply chain. Uh, so getting a good supply chain, you know, maybe finding someone other than China that can make, uh, um, you know, a, a motor would be really helpful. And, and can you just 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 briefly um, define for us the difference between a regular motor and an okay. mm -hmm. Right. So <clears throat> a motor just spins, right? An engine. An, ele an electric motor they don't use like an like motors. in a power drill for instance yeah right so everybody's familiar with that or a hair dryer or you know a, a electric bike right the the motor spins uh when you start bringing uh walking and limbs you know and manipulation with your fingers you need very precise control and so we call those servos or stepper motors there there are basically motors that have a feedback loop so that they're they're smart motors they're motors with usually they have their own circuit board um, they're or they're connected to a, a you know a complex uh, circuit you know uh, hardware PCB that does um, what they call differential proportional control on the robot, meaning that it's constantly adjusting the voltage based on the load and the gearing and the position of the motor. And so it's a smart it's a it's a what they call a closed loop, right? An open loop is just like I give I give this machine instructions and I never have any idea what it did a closed loop is you give it you, you tell the machine to do something it tells you what it did then you say oh that was that was almost right you're getting closer it's like 20 questions or you know warmer you know colder and, uh, and, and, and of course what, one of the ways that a number of people if i'm correct uh, uh, are dealing with the fact that actuators are so expensive is is is, is some flavor of hand-eye coordination yeah to... and and they're putting more cameras on them because cameras are cheap and because the software exists now to use the camera data in, in a useful way. So, uh, you know, but they still all have encoders. They all have, um, you know, uh, some of them have accelerometers and gyros, you know, in, in the limbs, uh, you know, basically. But so I think getting back to the question of how to get the cost reduced, I think for me, it's mostly a supply chain, you know, scale issue, right? Like, you know, who can make them at what scale uh, and what specifications, you know, are the minimum minimum viable robot we've been saying around the lab? And what is the minimum right. viable robot? And, it, you know, if it's it, working in the kitchen, it doesn't need to lift 30 kilograms because your mom works in the kitchen and she can't lift 30 kilograms. So nothing right. in that space is going to be just in a warehouse. You know, a guy wears a, you know, one of those uh, support belts and picks up a 90 pound thing. Right. But your grandmother doesn't do that when she's making soup. So it's a different it's a different requirement. Now, the tests that I've seen and the research around VLMs has all been with rather expensive uh, industrial robots. They're trying to, they're not really worried about the, like that company you just showed, they don't care about the hardware. You know, they're trying to be hardware agnostic, right? And they're trying to sell software. You're talking about um, Embody. Embody, yeah. And yeah. and some of the others, you know, that have that flavor. Interesting. Yeah. All right, well, that, that, that basically answers it. And, um, you know, it's, it, you know, as people know, we have our own company. We are going right. into the low-cost cobot space. We will be showing you yeah. what we're doing in our lab at some point. Um, but I think that's very, very interesting. And I think, you know, what Embody are doing, although I did make fun of them a little bit earlier because they don't seem to have anything, um, it is probably the direction that we need.
may end up heading in. Um, yep. We are software engineers after all. And um, that was very interesting. I think that was very educational for everybody involved. Thank you for that. And okay. um, I think that's all we're going to be doing this week. Again, if you want one of these T-shirts, all you have to do is make a comment and you'll probably win. Um, you didn't, thank you you didn't ask that. me about what nine means. I, I did not ask you about what, what I just thought that you were just going to say three squared, no. which, you know, is the lame number one. nine. Number nine, of course, number nine, of course. Of course. Some, of the, some of the audience may not get that reference. <laughs> the White Album. <laughs> Great. Marvelous. Thank you all for joining us. We will see you next week. Bye.